All right, take a look at another example here. It's asking us to identify all x values where f of x, which is one-third x cubed plus one-half x squared minus 6x, has a relative minimum. So in an earlier video, we um, found out that uh, f has a relative minimum when f prime changes from negative to positive. Okay? Just a brief refresher on that if you didn't catch that or if you don't remember. Let's just take a quick look right here. So this is an example of just a quick sketch of a graph. So at the bottom of this graph right here, there would be a relative minimum right there. Okay? So on the left side of this relative minimum, okay, you can see how the graph has a negative slope. On the right side, the graph has a positive slope. And the relative minimum occurs where the change is from a negative slope to a positive slope. Okay? Which is what slope is derivative. So where f prime is negative on the left, f prime is positive on the right, and you'll notice here at the relative minimum the slope is zero. Okay? You know, it could be there are cases where instead of having a slope of zero, you could have something like this, where the slope's undefined, but still it's where f prime changes from negative to positive. We'll deal with undefined slopes uh, in other times. We're gonna just have some zero slopes right now. So we want to know where does f prime change from negative to positive? So we're going to make a first derivative sine chart like we did in the example where we found where the function was increasing. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and find the derivative of this, f prime. So I'm going to bring the 3 down in front, it'll cancel the 1 third, so it'll just be x squared, plus, bring the 2 down in front, it'll cancel the 1 half, just plus x, then subtract 1 from my exponent, minus 6. And I'm going to set this equal to 0, because as we just saw a second ago, you know, relative min or max could occur when the slope is zero. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to factor this out. It's going to end up being x uh, plus 3, x minus 2 equals zero. Okay. So I have that f prime is equal to zero at x equals negative 3 and at x equals 2. Those are my two places where f prime is equal to zero. So, let me go ahead and make a sign chart. I'm going to label it f prime. And I'm going to go ahead and put on negative 3 and 2 on that sign chart, since that's where f prime equals 0. And again, the idea with the sign chart is, since we know those are the only values where f prime equals 0, those are the only places where the value of f prime can switch from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay? So, now we do need to test values in those intervals back in f prime, see whether f prime is positive or negative. So, you know, negative 3 right there, let me test, how about negative 4? Okay, so I'm going to put it into the factored version. I could plug it in there if I wanted, but the factored version makes it a little easier. So if I plug negative 4 into this portion here, that would end up being negative 1. If I plug negative 4 into that, it's a negative 6. So I have a negative times a negative would be a positive. Okay. In between negative 3 and 2, how about 0? That's a pretty easy value to test. Plug 0 in here, it's going to be 3. Plug 0 in there, it's going to be negative 2. Positive times a negative is a negative. On the right-hand side of 2, let me go and plug in 3, how about? 3 plus 3 is positive, 3 minus 2 is positive, positive times a positive is a positive. You'll notice on the last couple examples, it went positive, negative, positive, I think in both of them, and you'll notice, you see how the signs alternated. It doesn't always happen like that. There are cases where the signs do not change, okay, so you do need to always check each uh, interval just to make sure. So, what we're looking for now, again, we want to find where, identify the x values where that function has a relative min. As I said a second ago, a relative min occurs when f prime changes from negative to positive. Let's look on our f prime sign chart here, okay? I, I see a negative right here, I see a positive here. There's a change at 2. So to the left hand side of 2, f prime is negative. To the right hand side of 2, f prime is positive. So at 2, there's a change from negative to positive. So that means there's a relative minimum at x equals 2. Okay, relative minimum at x equals 2. Now, I didn't write it originally, which maybe I should have, but let me just go ahead and write this word up here, adding a little something else to this, justify. Okay? The AP test people um, have a specific way they want you to justify relative extrema. So in this case, if they said to justify your answer, I would write, okay, the answer is relative min and x equals 2. The justification would be since f prime changes from positive, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we're doing relative minimum. 
from negative to positive at x equals 2. So since f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals 2, that right there is pretty much how you have to do it. Now, I want to point out a couple things that are very important that I've seen with mistakes on this justifying. Um, some people I've seen just put since it changes. I can't put just it, okay? I've also seen some people say since the slope of f changes from negative to positive. Well, that's true, and I'm not sure exactly why you can't use that for justification, but the AP test people specify you have to use calculus language. So you have to either say since f prime or the derivative of f, okay? And talk about it changing from negative to positive, and it has to be told that it happens at x equals 2, okay? Don't just leave that part out and just say since f prime changes from negative to positive, it changes from negative to positive at x equals negative 2. I'm sorry, at x equals 2.